Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. You're great zombie. And good times here at the Waterfront Village. Thousands of passengers across the East Coast, of course, had to alter their plans. And we spoke to one kid who was trying to cope with the delay. I'm just sitting there on my iPod. It's just so frustrating. I want to be in Florida getting a tan on my back. Well, I woke up to go get me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. <laughs> then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life. And then the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Just minding my own business. Damn! Hit me hard right from the back. I was glued to my seat. I was like, Whoa! I could see the car in front of me. I was about to hit him. So I kind of veered off this way. As I veered off this way, the guy who hit me veered off that other way. And he hit the curb, flipped over, rolled over, run into the electrical pole. And I didn't know he hit the pole. All of a sudden, I kind of stopped. And I was like, whoa. And the, the wires come down. Boom. And then arc, arc, bam. That fire was coming everywhere. It was arcing, sparking, blowing up. I saw one arc, arc go from the corner of my van up to the car behind me. It was like a big rainbow. Boom. And it was coming up. Boom, boom. And I was like, shoo. So I, I opened up my door. I didn't touch no metal. And as I come up, I started to touch the top. And a little spark jumped out. I said, whoa. I, I stepped out the rest of the way. Lucky I didn't get burned more. So, crazy? Oh, it was crazy, dude. I was just sitting there and I was like, oh. <laughs> Reality hits you hard, bro. Oh, bro, it's just like, dude, you got the best barrels ever, dude. Just like you pull in and you just get spit right out of them. And you just drop in and just smack the lip. Whoopah! Drop down, snap, bah! and then after that, you just drop in, you just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted like that. Tell me about the whistles. The whistles go woo! It sounds we like what? It. When you want to woo woo, it's that woo woo. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the flows. They didn't trip off the flow masters. That and decoration, man. It's just man. for decoration. That's, that's it. it and that's all, man. We do it for decoration. you have it on your car? Yeah, I got it on my car. It was being installed on their car. Some neighbors were saying way too loud. That's only in the morning. He supposed to be up cooking breakfast or somebody. And so that's like an alarm clock. Woo, woo. And I was scared. I was finna eat a hamburger. It took it. And I don't even know where it's at. It took your hamburger out I'm of your hand. And drink. I don't know where it's at. How's it feel to get the power restored? It's been five days, hasn't you know it? It's, it's a... I'm so glad the power come back on because I was burning up. Lamasa Pace said she was thrilled to see all the power trucks rolling down her street, South Military. The whole street was lined up with them, with them cherry pickers and all them crew. I said, I said, you said hallelujah. I go like hot dog. Look at that, boy. Look at that thing. And five long hot days and nights after Saturday's storm, Delray has power for the first time. How well are you going to sleep tonight? You bet I'm going to sleep like a baby. Drink me some good old Kool-Aid and drink me some some cool big jug of ice or Kool-Aid and go to sleep like a baby. Snuck up behind him and took his Koran. He said something about burning the Koran. I was like, dude, you have no Koran and ran off. Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community. Many of you bring binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. I got to do look up in the tree. Who else in the leprechaun say yeah? yeah! Eyewitnesses say the leprechaun only comes out at night. If you shine a light in its direction, it suddenly disappears. This amateur sketch resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Others find it hard to believe and have come up with their own theories and explanations for the image. My theory is it's casting a shadow from the other limb. Could be a crackhead that got hold to the wrong stuff and it told him to get up in a tree and play a leprechaun. We're going to get down to the bottom of this. Yes, still on there, guy. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, man. This guy helping to direct traffic says he's prepared for his encounter with the leprechaun. He's suited up from head to toe. This wars all spells right here. This is a special leprechaun flute which has been passed down from thousands of years ago from my great-great-grandfather who was Irish. I just came to help out. 
others just came to get lucky in hopes a pot of gold may be buried under this tree. I'm going to run a backhoe and uproot that tree. I want to know where the gold is. I want the gold. Give me the gold. I want the gold. What do you think? Do you believe in UFOs? Oh, oh yeah, yes sir. Definitely. They're out there, man. I've seen them. I've been out there in Aurora, Texas. They got them little graves and stuff. Yeah, I've been out there and oh no, I'm planning a trip. I'm planning a trip. Uh, we're going out to like Arizona or something and figure something out. Or not Arizona, what was it? Yeah, it was Arizona, right? Air, the Air Force One where they found all that stuff. I got pictures of Roar. I've seen grave sites. They're out there, man, and I, I'm flying in the plane. I'm always hallucinating, but who really knows what I'm looking at? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, but there's no proof of this. Just people's accounts. You're right. There, There's no proof. But, I mean, there's no proof of Jesus or, you know, people go in the restroom until they tell you about it. You know what I mean? I mean, that's just kind of the way I see things. Uh, All right. So you believe it then? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Do you think there's, like, little green men out there? No little green men, sir. No? Well, no. what do you think there is out there? Who knows, dude? They could be made of water. I don't even know. Water? Water, man. You heard the man. Water. They could be made of anything extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial, you mean? That, the extraterrestrial. E extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial. There you go. Kelly Dodson was asleep with a little girl inside their apartment on Webster Drive when... I was attacked by some idiot from out here in the projects. Dodson says her attacker used a garbage can to climb onto the unit's ledge, open the upstairs window, and then he got in bed with her. He, he tried to rape me. He tried to pull my clothes off. Dodson struggled with her attacker, knocking over items in her bedroom. Antoine Dodson heard his sister scream and ran to help. Well, obviously we have a rapist in Lincoln Park. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up trying to rape them, so y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. The attacker got loose and went out the upstairs window, but he did leave something behind. We got your t-shirt, you didn't left fingerprints and all. You are so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. A crime scene investigator photographed and dusted for prints on the lid of the garbage can and the window pane and ledge. Dodson says he's never seen the perp before, but sends this warning to whoever is responsible. You don't have to come and confess that you did it. We're looking for you. We we going to find you. I'm letting you know that so you can run and tell that, What's homeboy. I was in the passenger side of this fucker's car, and he comes over on there. He was over by the recycling center. He says, oh, when I was in the Virgin Islands, 30 years old on a business trip, I, 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 I fucked this 14-year-old. I was like, you what? He's like, I raped this 14-year-old. He starts crying and gives me a big hug. He's just like, fuck, 300-pound guy. I'm like, oh, shit. You must be fuckered, man. Like, what's he talking about? I didn't take him seriously at first. He comes driving down this way. He's like, you know what? I come to realize I'm Jesus Christ, and I can do anything I fucking want to. And watch this. Bam! And he smashed into this fucking guy right there, pinned him in between that fucking truck. And so I fucking, I hop out, I look over, the guy's pinned there. I mean, like, freight train riders know this. Like, if you get pinned between something, do not fucking move that shit, otherwise you bleed out. Like, motherfucking, I, I ran in, I grabbed the keys, he's fucking sitting there like nothing even happened. And like, fucking, like, man, if you started driving that car around again, man, there would have been a hell of a lot of bodies around here. Fucking, I hop on out, and so I grabbed the bag, I threw it over by that pole right there, and then fucking Buddy gets out, and these two women are trying to help him. He runs up and he grabs one of them, man. Like, a guy that big can snap a woman's neck like a pencil stick. So I fucking ran up behind him with a hatchet, smash, smash, smash. Yeah. Who, who else is going? Who is walking there? But who else? I don't know how bad they are. Why don't they just walk the gutters? It ain't a far walk. It's just 38 miles. Why don't you walk? Why don't you walk the gutters? Can you walk the gutters a little more? I'll walk, yeah, I can walk the gutters. Why don't you walk the gutters? I don't, I don't need to walk the gutters. Well, shit, no, you know. You're going to put everybody else walking the gutters. Why don't you just walk the gutters? All right, I'll walk the gutters. Well, all right, let's go. All right, hang on. Let me do this one time. How about splitting that ass? Are you 
you'll be so goddamn fucking tired, by the time you get to New Hope, you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be so goddamn fucking tired by the time you get to New Hope that you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be... Mm, mm. Well, what's made you... What's got you so mad today? Me? Yeah. Because everybody wants to run. Everybody wants to run. That's good. Run from here to Gunnersville. I'll walk. I'll be right behind them and see how far they can run. It's a chauvinistic pig attitude that you're going to do something because you work at the arsenal and you got a fucking Mercedes Benz and you ain't got to walk every day so you're going to get out and strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that, that, that ass. When you start walking, my friend, and you get 10 and 15 miles on the highway, you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be half dead by the time you get there. So it's a chauvinistic pig attitude that Clinton's got to strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass. And when you walk about 15 or 20 miles, you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be so fucking tired, you won't hard to hold that ass up. You won't be strutting that ass, strutting that ass. Well, it's just been so crazy out here, as you can imagine. But about an hour ago, and I never heard no explosion. It's just I have a huge TV, and I kept seeing all these strange colors. So I walked out the door about eight feet, and it looked like you were looking at Afghanistan and they just blowed up two or three buses and thank God she was the only one at home but she said all I remember was I had something in a frying pan could have been chicken and she walked away and was gone just a little bit too long and it sparked a set of paper towels and from there all Hades broke loose. And when I walked out, I swear to God, if this gentleman can pan over to that tallest tree, the fireball was as high as that tree. Oh my God, yeah, well, what would you call that? 50 yards? But the, the garage was, was already collapsed. And this was before I even knew it was happening. And then when I walked out to the yard, there was like 15 fire trucks. The bedroom part of the house was collapsing and then boom the fireball went to the size of the house and up about 80 feet and thank God Tony wasn't home and she managed to get out of the house Yes, ma'am, but I didn't actually come in contact with her to approximately two minutes after the fact, and obviously she was in a state of hysteria. Uh, and they, they had a little dog, and I'm really afraid the dog didn't make it, but I don't know that. Well, you're very welcome. I mean, what's your name? Jessica. You're a very, Thanks. very beautiful young lady. Well, the police wouldn't let me go to through 100, 122nd, so I had to go around 119th and go, um, and I was, they let me look at the, the lawyer's building. I know the vacuum cleaner man. He's seen my tits. Um, I know that's not going on TV, but it's true. It's true. I'm not here to lie to you. Um, I was trying to get a hold of him because I couldn't identify the business that window got blown out and I was trying to help the police figure out who to contact to secure 
that poor business. Did you see the damage to the building then? All the bricks? Yes, yes, yes. He must have been gravely hurt. He must have been badly hurt, injured. How, how fast do you think someone must have been going? I haven't been allowed to drive for three years, so I am not a good judge of that. Anything else you want to add about what you saw? You want to see my tits? <laughs> Louie? <laughs>